Hello there, so today we'll be going over pretty much all the ways that I store my Lego minifigures, being it displaying them as you can see here we have a few different minifigure stands on the side there's one that i'm still yet to get and if you are already subscribed to this channel you'll know exactly what one that is and there's one method that i don't use anymore but it was a really nice method when i was using it so i'll be going over that as well i think there's a total of like 12 different ways i display the lego just around this corner of the room so let's get straight into the video and of course, the first way to display your minifigures is, of course, to build something with them. I have all these dioramas on display for the intros and some outros of most of my videos. And I have built others like this Bad Batch one, and you'll see a Clone Wars one in a second. It's the best way to display your minifigures in action, in part of a scene that perhaps they're in, or represented as some custom scene and storyline that you've made up. I would like to point out whilst we're looking at the door of the fates mock that not only are the instructions on rebrickable but maul also is holding his saber in his left hand which i've also switched up for the mech we'll take a look at that in a minute but i didn't even realize maul was left-handed so thank you to the commenter who pointed that out for me and over here you can see another diorama-esque build that i have created captain rex is on the bad batch mock so he is missing from this but this is mostly minifigure based as it is a minifigure heavy scene or a character heavy scene and i've just sat these all around a base plate or some custom base plate that i've created not one word not the base plates lego cell but a base full of plates and just behind you can see the second way i display minifigures and that is on acrylic cases now i don't just have this one here but on the other side I do have a Harry Potter one and that is where my fiance stores most of the Harry Potter minifigures as you get so many with the sets there's just not enough space to display them on their shelves but it's a really handy way and you do get these grey plates I'm pretty sure they're 16 by 8 but they are quite big and can fit a whole CMF of 16 or 12 minifigures which comes in very very handy and the bottom I've actually replaced with the 3x4 black plates and that allows me just to sit a few extra minifigures and if I wanted say the Spider-Man minifigures I could just take out their plate and replace it when I'm done. So I find that very useful for these and if you are going to pick them up I grabbed the red and the blue ones which were the first ones released. I think they're about £45. The tan Harry Potter ones are like £30, £35 and are a bit cheaper so if you don't mind having the tan cases or perhaps you even want to just spray paint them yourself definitely go for the cheaper option and as i said we do have one for harry potter and i guess that brings us on to our next one you can display them as part of a bigger mock like the harry potter castle here which does have a handful of minifigures we've even got homer who's enrolled at hogwarts but we have a bunch of minifigures in their scenes we even have a few over here and a few in these buildings as well especially for privet drive and hagrid's hut they both have all their minifigures in them and it's a nice way to display them i guess this is the third method of displaying so i will include minecraft in this as that has got a ton of minifigures and also the lego city because i've got plenty of minifigures built into separate scenes and part of a bigger display so it's a very handy way to fit minifigures all around and i think that takes us on to our next one already we are storming through these and that is the star wars minifigure sort of staircase at this point you can see there are a bunch of minifigures here and all i've done is alternated which side they are on as you can see kiedi mundi is offset from the two c3po's and then you've got your lauren offset from him Anakin offset and if the batch were behind him they would be offset so it creates this nice column of minifigures and you can still see the torsos and the upper legs of the minifigures behind at least as long as they've not got short legs like Yoda there but there are a ton of minifigures and whilst I'm here I would like to point out in my old Republic set review I mentioned this droid had a third wheel and what I haven't shown you is my 24R2 you might have already seen them in mocks especially if you watch my tentative boarding diorama but initially i did what everyone does using the cheese slope and connecting it to the bottom there 
but I think I found the ultimate method of giving R2 a third wheel. As you can see, we've got the stud with the bar in it, and then just one of the round tiles that is half round and half squared off. So if you'd like a closer look at that, do let me know, but I think that's the ultimate way of giving R2 the third wheel. Now, when you're displaying minifigures, they don't only have to be displayed as part of their set. But you can also add them to one of your giant sets, not just the Disney castle, the Lion's Knight castle, and pretty much any other big design. As you can see, I've already gone over them, so I'm not going to point out every minifigure. But there are a bunch of minifigures all around the castle, all Disney themed, and they all line up pretty well. Now, as we're halfway through the video, I thought I'd show you a design that I no longer use, and we're going down to my sort of Star Wars merch corner here. As you can see right at the back, I've actually 3D printed my own minifigure stands and they are a really cool design, but when we moved, I found they just took up way too much space. So I did keep a few of them and they do fit the Lego 3x4 base plate in there quite nicely. So perhaps if I get a bit more space, I'll go back to using these at some point. But for now, I'm gonna keep working on my Clone Wars Battle Shelf, and we'll get to the ATT in a minute. That's another story. But as you can see, I've got a load of clones ready to display, fighting the droid army, and we've got half a square of droids there. That is where all my droids are. I've got a few droid pieces, spare arms and such, and a few missing heads that have snapped whilst I've been playing with them that I need to replace and beef up my droid army. So Next time I place a brick link or brick out order, I'll definitely be adding the droid parts to the car if they've got them in stock. And it's a great way to display them because you can create your own scenes. Again, like with the dioramas, like with the Lego City, it's a way to display them on a shelf mid-fight scene. So you're still staying somewhat accurate to the reference material, but also gives you a chance to use up all your ships like this ATTE, which I guess is the seventh now way of displaying clones, because if you've seen my video of filling the ATTE, you know that inside of here, if I can get it open, it was much easier to open it when it was level on the desk. But if I can get it open, I have packed this thing with countless clones. In fact, you can count them. There's a video dedicated to it. I will leave that in the description and tag that on screen now somewhere so that you can go and watch that but there is a bunch of clones in there and it's really amazing just how many clones you can fit because the set only came with like five 212 clones and speaking of 212 clones again we've got rex missing from the third place he's meant to be so if we do get rex from the ucs venator in a cheaper set i might have to pick up a few just to spread him around my displays and again ahsoka's missing but I've got many figures displayed as part of their mechs, even the Stormtroopers with attentive boarding. So I've only actually got five minifigures here. But it's a great way to display them like giant action figures. And perhaps they'll look pretty neat next to my Black Series figures down in my Star Wars memorabilia shelf that you saw earlier. But we've got Vader, Palpatine and Luke from Return of the Jedi. We've got the Empire Strikes Back, Boba Fett. And also Darth Maul from the Clone Wars, which do look pretty cool on this display. And right next to them, I have a few minifigure scale ships, which pretty much everything Star Wars you can see is either available on Rubricable or will be at some point. And we also have a few Mario Karts, which tie up to the next display, which is displaying the minifigures in their ships. All of these TIE Fighters have a pilot to go with them. And even the A-Wing's got his pilot there. I'm pretty sure the X-Wing doesn't, but displaying your figures either in or on top of their ships, as is the case with Lord Vader there, is a great way to display your minifigures. And if you don't have anywhere else to display them, you can definitely get a few minifigures in each of their ships or even on the little bikes and accessories that come with them. We've got countless land speeders that you can fill with all your different variations of Luke. And it's quite a cool way to display them on the shelf without having to stand them up next to them. Now the final current method I use to store my minifigures before we get into my next steps is this giant Lego head, which has done me well. I've had it for pretty much 15 years since I started getting Lego to store my Lego. And right now it's storing all of my minifigures in Ziploc bags. So we have the first order and final order figures. We have a bunch of 
odd bits that I think I've put together. We have some stormtroopers. We also have a bag of clones, which is currently empty because they're split between my ATTE and Bad Batch shuttle. But there's a bunch of other CMFs from the older series, and they're all divided into Ziploc bags, and they fit inside of this Lego head, which I think is fitting for a minifigure storage. So I'd love to get a minifigure torso display and then an arm to display other figures and just build a giant Lego minifigure. Perhaps that's something I can 3D print one day because that will look really awesome. Do let me know if you'd love to see some 3D printing on the channel because I've sort of taken a break from it and I'd love to get back into it. So before we end up, there is one more display that I will be getting sometime very soon. And as voted by use, this base plate will be becoming this Smith's LED display for these minifigures, CMFs, and probably a few others. I'll be able to fit so many more than on this base plate, and that will hopefully take up at least this area. It will be a bit wider than the base plate, but I will be getting that soon. Again, I've got a few things I'd like to do beforehand, and whilst I've got these ideas, I don't really want to spend that money if I'm not going to cover it for a while, so... As soon as I've got a free day for a video, I'll be picking that up and reviewing it, unboxing it, hanging it up, filling it with CMFs all in the one video. I won't be dragging it out, so definitely subscribe, stay tuned for that, as voted by you guys in the community tab. And I do appreciate all the votes in the community tab. I know you all really love the community poll, so that's not one thing that's ever gonna suddenly go away. So keep an eye out for the next poll if you don't catch the video. And hopefully this can inspire you to use one of these methods to display your minifigures. I mean, I do have quite a lot in that Lego head tub, but I definitely want to get a few more out and even creating the battle as I am on this bottom shelf helps to display a few more figures. So I hope I've inspired you to change up how you display your minifigures and may the brick be with you always.